I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. And this, as far as I am aware, is the only podcast that asks the eternal question, the one that has haunted philosophers for generations. Hey, Jamie, what you watching? Philosophizers. Talk about what I watch. How about that? Yeah. Oh, uh. Um, <laughs> I was kind of like, hoping for the name of a movie, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I uh, recently watched, this is going way back, All right, The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane. Oh, I've never seen that. I hadn't either. And it's one of those, um, for anybody who doesn't know, it has um, Jodie Foster and Martin Sheen. And I had never seen it either. But it's one of those movies that you hear about all the time because Jodie Foster was 14 and there's actually some nudity. And and, and I was like, whoa, okay. Um, now it's not like, I don't know. It, it's kind of weird. It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't come across um, exploitative. Right. It's, it's not done for, for sexiness. I mean, it's kind of weird. It she's getting in bed with someone, but but it doesn't. You don't see like there's not a, a there's not a love scene or anything like that. You know, it's just like a brief. Um, she drops her nightgown, and you see it from the back kind of thing. But um, so the idea is that she is a little girl, and she lives down the lane. And the end. Um, oh, she, right. Well, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's, you know. Truth to advertising, opens, I guess. Uh, the first scene opens on Halloween night, and there's a knock at her door, and she goes and answers the door, and it is Martin Sheen. And I got to tell you, he is honestly one of the most terrifying people I've ever seen. This character is, it, it, he starts out really creepy because she's 14, and he starts like, trying to touch her you know it's also her birthday and her parents aren't home and he like go he swats her on the bottom and she's like well what are you doing and he's like oh it's your birthday spanking i get to give you a birthday spanking i mean just really creepy shit like that and it just my whole body just tensed up and cringe every time he's on the screen just that's how creepy he is like his performance is amazing he's i've never really considered martin sheen threatening (laughs) <laughs> but um um eh, dead zone martin man. sheen is pretty pretty I, I was well i was just about to say except in the dead zone yeah but uh, but this guy is he just he seriously makes your skin crawl and you know everyone keeps wanting to come by and she has this asshole landlady who comes by and they keep wanting to talk to her parents well her mother's dead but um and she's always like, oh, my father's working or my father's in New York or my father's, you know, so you, you don't, you know, where is her father? And uh, then, you know, as things unfold, you find out like what's going on. And it's really good. It's it's on Shutter, and it's not a horror film. It's dark and it definitely has some dark themes, but it's not a horror film. But if you do want to see it, it's on Shutter. And I do recommend it. I thought that it was excellent. Uh, Jodie Foster, she's always good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Martin Sheen was phenomenal. And then I can't remember the guy who plays her boyfriend. Um, shoot. I knew him as soon as I saw him. Oh, he's one of the Jacoby brothers. Um, there are three of them. Um, Scott and... I forget all of them. They were they were, they were all over the they were all over the place in the eighties anyway, and he's like the oldest Jacoby brother, and um, he was really good too. Like they, all the performances are really really great, and so I do recommend it. I highly recommend it. But and you can watch it super easy. It's on Shutter. Yeah, and as we have often said, you know, if you're a horror fan and you are not subscribed to Shutter, then what in the hell are you doing? No, oh my God, yes get you some shutter it's cheap too yeah. i mean I, I i get it by the year and it's under 60 dollars for a solid year like 56.99 or something like that yeah like there's really no reason not to yeah it's it's one of the more reasonably priced streaming services and they do good work um I, hey so i've got a movie you recommended to me that i want to talk to you about 
oh oh uh no i don't mean Sounds it like, like you're that. calling me down onto the carpet <laughs> i'm calling i'm calling you out salmons uh no i saw the night house oh okay so which i like it this is the time of year where i'm starting to catch up on all the movies that in mm-hmm. theory could make a top 10 list oh mine i'm as, doing the same thing uh so I watched uh, a, a number of films that were, you know, in the conversation on mm-hmm. different websites and different lists and that kind of thing. And The Night House was one that I knew you had enjoyed a lot, and I was looking forward to watching it. And and I thought it was quite good. Uh, I don't know exactly where I land on it. Like, and, and I'll talk about a movie later that it, the reason that I'm a little cooler on the night house is I saw this other movie like the day before I saw the night house and that one kind of oh. blew my hair back. And, uh, but the night house I think is really good. And I like the fact that, you know, as you go through the film, you understand like, Oh, this is all a metaphor for depression and that kind of yeah. thing. Um, but I will say that, Rebecca Hall is fantastic mm-hmm. in in that movie. That scene where, and it, just to make it clear for people listening, the movie is about a uh, a school teacher as played by Rebecca Hall, whose husband has killed himself, and she's sort of dealing with the grief of that, and also begins to discover things about her husband uh, that may or may not be supernatural to one degree or another. And I still kind of wrestle with, okay, is there anything really supernatural afoot in this movie or not? A lot of this could just be in her head or et cetera. But I think that's kind of the game of the movie. Um, And, you know, no matter which side of that you come down on, I still think it, it does what it does very effectively. That said the scene, and this is early on, so I'm not spoiling anything. But when uh, <laughs> the woman, uh, the the parent comes in to talk to her about the C that her oh, son got yeah. in speech class, when uh, she's like, well, you know, my, uh, my son was, uh, I want to know why he got the C. And she's like, well, well, it's because your son didn't do one of the assignments. And the parent says, well, he says that you were going to allow him to make that up. And she was like, I did. I did say that. And then he never did it. She was like, well, the last day of school, he was going to make up that assignment. And then you weren't there. And I guess sometimes, you know, things come up just like it did with you. And she's like, you know what? My husband went out onto uh, a boat and shot himself in the head, and I didn't have any idea that he was depressed or anything. So, frankly, I don't give a shit about your son's grade. What do you want? You want a B? Is that good? Because I, I don't I give a shit it. about any of this. I love it. I, it's that, so And good. that woman, when she is trying so hard to swallow her foot. <laughs> yeah, when she's like, oh, I had no idea. I'm so sorry for your loss. And she's like, oh, you want an A? Is that what you want? And she's like, no, no, that's not what I meant. Okay, oh, okay, well, I guess a B is fine then. How about you get the fuck out of here? Oh, it's it was so satisfying. Um, yeah, it's well, it's all those things you've always wanted to say to all those people who are just being a jackass, and it's just, and it's also very indicative of the fact that people are so tuned in to their wants and needs that they don't even stop to think that something else could be going on with the other person they're talking to. Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, how often is it that teachers miss the last day of school? Wouldn't you think there was a reason for that? Right. Well, right. It, a lot of it is just not being able to look beyond yourself. And 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 that's sort of what Rebecca Hall is kind of victim of as well, is that, you know, she was so concerned with her own fight, battle with depression and that kind of thing. Um, she misses a lot of what's going on with her husband, you know, whether or not. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, I don't want to, there, there's a conversation to be had about this movie that is much more spoilery. And that is one we may have on a a different podcast at some point, but I do think that where they go with it, I, I wish it were buttoned up a little bit better in terms of like, not, not necessarily whether it's supernatural or not. I, I think you can still debate that, even though some of the supernatural effects of the film 
I think are really, really cool. Like when she'll see a figure in the way that the angle of the house is and that yeah. kind of stuff, that's really well done. Um, though the thing that I was left wondering about is this secret that her husband has, was that all real? And, and it seems like it is, but I, I wish there had been like an extra two minutes of the movie just to kind of wrap that up a little bit more neatly. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah. But um, like, and that's not a giant knock or anything. I still think like, oh, it's a really creepy movie. It's a good ghost story. There's there it, there's great atmosphere in it. There's really great performances in it. You know, like I'm not complaining about the movie as a whole because of these minor complaints that I have. Uh, but there are things that I wish were just a little bit more tightly drawn. But um it was still very good it's a really yeah. good movie i do love that we are discovering things as she is discovering them mm -hmm. and so because of that your brain every time she you know peels back a layer of the mystery your brain will go in like one direction and so at some at one point you think in uh, like one thing about her husband like oh this is what he was doing and then you learn something else and you're like oh oh okay this is what he's doing and then you learn something else and you're like oh no that's not at all <laughs> like i was i was way off but i uh man ultimately huh, can you hear my breathing i'm rattling <laughs> i hope it's not a death rattle no well hopefully um, not it's like the the grudge <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, ultimately the, what it says about the relationship that they had, uh, and it, it, this is so, I mean, you have to be so careful talking about this movie yeah, because yeah. you just one misstep, but, um, what it says about what, how he felt, I, I just, I was just crying by the time we got to the end cuz it's um that I don't know I was not expecting it to be what it was at all and I was so pleased I was just was wow so yeah um if people haven't there haven't seen it I think they see it they should see it and I'm so glad you enjoyed it um oh very much like it, it's a very compelling movie and and like you said there's enough mystery as well like it reminded me a little bit of the changeling in the sense yeah, that there that. there is yeah. kind of this mystery surrounding the haunting yeah and so you're just you're sort of on that journey with rebecca hall like you said where you're just like oh okay well, so this is what's going on oh wait no that's not what's going on this is what's really going on um but it's really interesting and i'm glad i saw that in context of not not just watching you know a bunch of really good movies at the end of the year but also as i was watching i was like oh yeah i'm really glad this is the guy that's doing hellraiser you oh know. yes i agree with that the only thing i was missing from that movie was a microfiche scene but yeah but you do get a, those you get an old bookshop and that yeah. i i'm that, good with yeah, that. that i'm okay with that you're yeah. right i am okay with that uh, I, I like going <laughs> and I like her attitude with the, the guy who owns the bookshop of like, can you tell me anything? Like, when did he buy these books? Oh, we don't keep records like that. And, well, can you tell me anything else by the, oh, you don't keep records like that. Is that what I'm getting from you? Like Rebecca Hall is kind of, kind of bitchy in the best way where she just is not taking anybody's bullshit anymore and it yeah she's wonderful in it. it it's a great character um i like her friend a lot uh yeah. claire i think i think she is a great character as well i um, love when they're at the at the restaurant or the bar or whatever and they're like oh well, what did, it, did he leave a note and then she goes and pulls it out of her purse yeah it's like oh oh you you you, you carry it with you <laughs> yeah oh that's man that is the kind of shit that makes me happy in a movie where you're like oh is there a note oh there is a oh, please please tell me you're gonna read it 
Oh, she is <laughs> right here. Um, yeah, like it, it. It's a really good script because the mo- the movie knows what to give its audience. And there's a moment too I really liked in that same scene where they're talking about sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. And I think it's even Claire who's like, oh, did you see that documentary? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we all saw that documentary about sleep paralysis. Anyway, that that ain't what we're talking about here. But it was a really nice kind of tip of the hat to that sleep paralysis documentary that came out not long ago. Where Uh all these characters were like, oh, yeah, we all saw that. And I, 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 it just felt like real people having a real conversation. And uh, it was, yeah, it's a very good movie. It's a very good movie. Um, and yes, if you are a horror fan and you have not seen The Night House yet, you are missing what could be one of the best movies of the year. All right. Well, speaking of trying to cram for the end of the year, uh huh. I have, I've been trying to do the same thing. And being off socials has been wonderful but at the same time it has also kept me from seeing a lot of movies that people have the conversation about you know they'll be making the rounds on the socials you know um and so i'm trying to pick them up here and there as i go i've been looking at lists online and and asking some of my friends like hey you know anything i'm missing anything you saw that you know i need to squeeze in and i didn't really hear about this one from anyone but i thought it looked interesting and it's honeydew oh yeah um, i've seen that and it stars sawyer spielberg mm-hmm. who is steven spielberg's son who by the way i think is a really good actor like i i was pleased with him this movie though man i, I was in it like i i was it because i love like hillbilly horror i love uh you know if you're gonna go out in the middle of the night and end up at some crazy old lady's house with her son who sits and stares at you while he's watching cartoons on the kitchen table i i mean he's not on the kitchen table the cartoons are but i i'm there like i'm in it and so i was really intrigued and i was enjoying the performances and i was curious to see where it would go i kind of had it pegged a little early on as to what the ultimate thing was, but I, that's fine. I don't, I don't mind if I, if I can, if I know what's going on, I'm still okay with that. As long as you, as long as you keep me in the movie and they did. The problem I had with the film was that I felt like after the big, everything is revealed. It just kept going. Yeah. And I'm like, why are we still going? You know? And it just, I mean, and it kept going for like 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, we know like what, why are you basically just telling us stuff that we already know? And it's almost like there were, I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know if they didn't trust that people would get it uh, because like kind of early on, um, Gumi, Goonie, Goonie, whatever the hell. Um, his his eye started like he started bleeding out of his eye at one point while he was sitting at the table, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, he's bleeding out of his eyeball. That can't be good." Well, then later on in the movie, you find out what why, and then they way past that, they make it a point to show you two other characters doing exactly the same thing, and I'm like, "Yeah, we got it." <laughs> like I, I don't know, like the first one was foreshadowing. And then we see the reason I don't think you need to drill it home, you know, twice. Like it just, I didn't think it was necessary. And, and I got it kind of exhausted with the movie at, at that point. And then I was like, well, shit. Cause I was really enjoying it. I was like, hell yeah, I'm loving this. And then it was like, they didn't know how to end it. And then by the time they got finished with it, I was bored. Like, why am I still here? Why am I still watching this? But I don't know. Did you have the same? I mean, did that, do you see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's been a while since I've seen it. And that movie does not have a lot of staying power in terms of just remembering the basic beats of what the fuck happened in that movie. Um, and I, I remember most of it, but I remember having much the same reaction of this is kind of fine but it's going on too long and 
it's got a good atmosphere and there are movies for which that alone can kind of carry it and honey do just wasn't that movie where it's it's got some interesting visuals and it's got some good atmosphere but yeah by the end of that movie i was i was way ready for that movie to be over yeah and i hate that like i i really hate it because i feel like they squandered the good that they had and that because i'm serious like three quarters of the way through half through halfway through the movie to like three quarters of the way through i was like oh I am in I am in love with this movie. Like I was getting ready to text people going, Oh my god, I love this movie and then just because the atmosphere was so good, I I felt like um the old woman was I just loved her, you know. And then the they had this whole um the whole made up fungus thing. Yeah uh, sort of co which is made up but it's loosely based on ergot um and a couple of other fungal in fact they basically took several and kind of smooshed them together but mostly ergot so because in the beginning when she was watching the videos that our lead was watching like youtube videos or whatever because she's researching this um this wheat fungus i uh i was like oh i bet this is going to be about ergot which very cool like i am mm-hmm. i am all about that you know being a huge huge nerd about the salem witch trials I am all about that shit. So I'm like, all right, here, this is going to be good. Well, then, you know, you saw some little things like the, um, like her blackened fingers from the gangrene Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the, the, um, the, the shaking or the like convulsing. And I was like, okay, this is really cool. Like they're, they're going somewhere with this. And I even looked it up and that's how I know it was fake. Cause I looked it up and I was like, is this real? Cause I've never heard of it. And no, it was, totally fictional but basically they based it on some real real things and then came up with their own and i'm like i am so excited to see where this goes ultimately it didn't really mean anything except that the only thing i can get from it is that i guess that's what kind of drove them insane but you could have i feel like you could have mined so much more good out of this fungal thing if you had so much more good than just basically getting us to the end, just to say, well, they're nuts. I'm like, well, yeah, it was such a waste. You know, I don't know. I was just kind of irritated because I feel like they set up something really cool and then didn't follow through with it. It's also an hour and 45 minutes long. And this is a movie that really would have benefited from being 90 minutes long. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, honestly, if it had been a trim 90 minutes, I think it would have been fantastic. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, you know, the, the, sometimes just directors get all up their own ass in their movie. Yep. And and I think that's kind of what happened here. And like, it's I, I think you're right. like, it's not the worst movie I saw this year by any stretch. But, man, like uh, a month after I'd seen it, I was like, what was? Oh, yeah. OK, so that was about crop fungus got it okay yeah i mean it's not the worst at all but it is probably one of the more disappointing ones only because how excited i was and how invested i was uh, to just ultimately be kind of let down but yeah yeah a little bit of a bummer uh i agree i thought it had a, an interesting premise and and some interesting stuff in it but yeah it kind of ran out of steam um let me all right so let me t- mention the movie that really did not blow my hair back uh that i watched the day before the night house which is oh, why I'm, I'm not completely I'm really bananas. hoping i haven't seen it because i'm looking for something exciting to see what is it okay it, well exciting may not be the right word for this but the movie is called my heart can't beat unless you tell it to oh i've heard of it why i don't know why uh, but I have heard the title. Duncan was real big on it and told me I needed to see it. And I hate to say that he's right, but Duncan was right. And this is, <laughs> I was going to save this till later, but then talking about Honeydew, it's like, oh, okay, this is the version of Honeydew that you kind of want to see, where it's this very, you know, measured pace. You could go so far as to call it slow moving, although I don't know that I'd go that far, but it's not, it, it's not an action movie by any stretch. Um, it, it is much more of a drama. 
I'm but okay with that. It is uh, a a movie um, starring Patrick Fugit from Almost Famous, all grown wow. up. Wow! And with a pretty awesome beard. And it's him and his sister, and they are taking care of their younger brother, who is not exactly a vampire, but he ain't exactly not a vampire. You know, like he can't go out in the sun and he needs blood to live. And so the movie is the, the, this brother and sister are having to do heinous shit, like kill homeless people to keep this dude alive. And you know, the, the action of the movie starts there. Um, the thing that I really love about this movie is that it is a not so secret allegory of what happens to a family taking care of a sick relative where okay. the whole, that's just what your life becomes about. And there's this great scene early on where Patrick Fugit goes to the local prostitute. I assume there are more than one, but this is the one he goes to. <laughs> and, and after they're done, she's kind of like, all right, you need to kind of get your shit and go. And he's like, can we just talk for a little bit? And she's like, look, I, you know, I got to make money. And he's like, I'll pay you. I'll, I'll, I'll pay you for an, another hour. I, I just want to talk to somebody. And so he ends up paying her. And just so he can ask her about a trip that she made to Miami one time. And, and it's just this heartbreaking moment where you realize like this guy is just he's so desperate to have any life experience that is not taking care of this sick fucking brother of his that he will pay he will pay this prostitute for her memories of a trip that he wants to take and oh, it's it, it's incredibly sad like this is not a feel good movie by any stretch it's really sad it's it, it it's incredibly well acted um there it, it's just filled with all these little somber moments where you understand the hell that these characters are in and all of them like nobody is immune from this the the younger brother who is in need of blood ain't having a great time either you know because he's he's forced to stay in the house and they can't really let him go out anywhere and you know, he just wants to have friends. He keeps watching these kids play outside, and he's like, "How about you guys let me go out and play with them?" And they're like, "Are you f out of your fucking mind? <laughs> like you're you're gonna drink their blood if you <laughs> if if one of them cuts themselves?" And uh, you know, it like like I said, it's all allegory. This whole it, it, it's sort of like um, um, ritual or not ritual, uh, the uh, relic. Where it's like, oh, that movie yeah. is just an allegory for caring for a parent with dementia. And this is the same thing, only it's instead of dementia, it's just, hey, what if what if you've got this perpetually sick child or sick relative that you're dealing with and it just consumes everyone's life in the family? Like it, the ripple effects of that uh, just keep spreading. And it, it's, like I said, it's very somber. It's, it does not, this is not a vampire movie, even though it has elements and, and trappings of a vampire story. It is much more a family story. Um, and, it, and it's a very tragic story. Uh, but man, I just, like ever since I've seen it, I keep going back and thinking about little moments from that movie that I thought were just like heartbreaking or sweet or... You know, the uh, Patrick Fugit, I think, is just incredible in it. Um, he's got the this whole scene with this kid who kind of discovers what's going on, um, where he he's talking to him and and realizes like, oh, this kid's living alone with his father, and he says, yeah, that's hard, isn't it? You know, and it's like, oh, he, like he completely recognizes you know, like game knows game kind of thing of like, Oh, you're living in a really sad house too. And so that's why I'm, you know, I'm, I'm entertaining the idea of letting you go. Um, anyway, it's just, it, it, it's heartbreaking and wonderful and, uh, a very indie kind of quiet movie 
but that that's the kind of stuff that I think impacts me most these days. Like I like a good broad, you know, horror film as much as anybody, but something like this, some something like My Heart Can't Beat unless you tell it to. Um it it's just one of those movies I'm not soon going to forget. Unlike Honeydew. And and Jamie rockets in at like 87 minutes 90 minutes something like that whoa right now we're talking right (laughs) like yeah for it being that kind of movie it just doesn't fuck around like it it tells the story it wants to wants to tell and gets out and i can respect that yeah oh for sure like if this movie were you know like an hour 50 oh you can keep it but uh no, the fact that this movie is only hold on, let me let me give you the exact runtime on this. Hour twenty nine for this movie, and it like I said, it gets in, it tells the story it wants to tell, and it gets the fuck out. And um I really, really uh enjoyed it a lot. Uh d- directed by a guy named uh Jonathan Quartes, um, who I don't think uh has done a lot of other stuff, but it's uh it's it's good i can't again if you're putting together that end of year list at least give it a watch you may your mileage may vary when it comes to like how hard hitting you found the movie but uh i i loved it uh i can't imagine that i wouldn't as well i mean if both you and duncan give it a thumbs up you know how can i how could i not yeah, and it it was one he specifically said, like, if you're thinking about putting together a top ten list, you need to see this movie before you finalize that list. And and I totally agree. Like, it's eh, I don't think it's going to be top of my list because, I mean, just between you and me, Jamie, that fucking end the earth really rung my bell this year. Um, but uh, it'll be on the list for sure. It 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 left a a, a crater. That is awesome. Well, good. Um, that'll give me some. I'm serious. I've been dying to. I'm, I'm afraid to spend. It's like I, I texted Dave earlier and I'm like, hey, should I watch Agnes? And he's like, nope. And I'm like, okay, good. I'll just. Yeah. He's like, that's he's kind like of a maybe. Bummer. He's like, maybe watch it, you know, later on. Don't try to cram it in for the year end of the year because it's not worth it. <laughs> Excuse me. And I was like, okay, well, that's what I needed. Um, did you see that one? No, uh, that okay. that's the Verhoeven non exploitation thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I haven't. Yeah, he said it wasn't exactly bad. It's just that he well, it, he said it it had an odd tone shift, like a tonal shift in the middle of the movie. And it, he's like, I just he's like, I've never seen anything like it. I, I don't get it. And I'm like, okay, well, um, I'm like, well, I'm at, maybe I'll watch it, but not. I'm probably not going to try to force it before I do my list. Yeah. Tell you what I would recommend forcing though, before you do your list Ooh. is well, and again, mileage may vary and you may have already seen it, but I was really enthralled mm-hmm. by the deep house. Oh shit. Yeah. 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 No, I've seen that. Yeah. I- I've seen I, that uh, shit. I, uh, I, wow. Um, I just, and it's a very simple, it's basically a haunted house underwater. Oh, but, totally. That yeah, that is the the elevator pitch for that movie is what if a haunted house but underwater. But I gotta tell you, man. Now, now Bustillo and, and and Mallory, they have always, even if I didn't love the film, um, like I love Inside. I thought Candisha was really good. Um, I thought Livid was good, and. I uh, Leatherface is kind of here and there, you know, it kind of depends, but <laughs> yeah. they, what they can do though, is they've always, no matter how I felt about the film on film on the whole, the technical prowess was always there. They know how to make a fucking movie that looks good. And this one, I was just kind of blown away. I was so sucked in. I was just completely immersed I was so sucked into the visuals and even their use of music. It was kind of cheeky the way they used the music in the film, but I loved it. And the, I just, I don't know the whole time I was just like, I, at one point I turned to Brian, I was like, I am so happy. I'm watching this movie right now. <laughs> yeah. I just, I loved it. And so. it's certainly got, 
like a Lovecraftian nod or two in. Yes, it, uh, absolutely. Sure. I, I'll tell you. Okay, so here's here's my complaints with the Deep House because I I mostly agree with it, with what you're saying. I watched it. Um, it was one of those things where I watched it one day and then the very next day, uh, I made my girlfriend watch it. Um, <laughs> I was like, "You need." To, I mentioned it to her the night before, and then we the, we watched it the next day. Um, before my rental period ran out, but uh, I think it is it, it's r- the visuals are really really creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very simple story, very simple to the to the point where I think that the story may be the biggest drawback is that it's so uncomplicated that yeah. it's like eh, I wish there were a little more meat on this bone. Um, and without getting into spoilers, I, I was not crazy about the very end of the movie. Um, uh, but, uh, I just, I, I didn't like where the characters landed, you know, I was okay. like, I, I kind of feel like there needed to be a little bit more of a resolution here. Um, but I, I get it. It just wasn't necessarily my cup of tea. And part of it is just that I'm not, I, I think I'm just getting old and soft, where uh, I don't necessarily want my endings to be like, I want this to be fucking hardcore. Um, no, I know. And, th- and that's the thing about this movie is, honestly, it could have gone right up until the very end. Like, right up until the very last Frank could have gone either way. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, while I was watching it, I'm like, I would be okay if it, you know, regardless of which way it goes. And then... You know, it went the way it went, and I was like, you know, I I would have been fine if it had gone the other way. Yeah, like, and I, can, I, I yeah. would I would have been okay with that because I feel like it was earned. You know, I, yeah, I I don't disagree with that. It, it like I said, I just for what those characters went through. Yeah, I was like, eh, I just I wish this had ended differently. Yeah, but uh, I still had a blast with it. Like, it's a great fun house kind of movie. And it's exactly. Yes, it's like going through a fun house, but underwater. Also, it kind of reminded me of playing a video game. Yeah, but underwater for know? sure. Yeah, 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 it's like yeah, if the Resident Evil mansion were submerged. Um, yeah, it, and and one thing I did not know about myself uh, until watching that movie was that the idea of ghosts <laughs> or. or corpse looking folks uh just slowly swimming at you oh what like i didn't realize that was a thing that creeped me out until i saw this movie i was like oh, oh that is really chilling oh my god i was like curled up on like like on brian the whole time i was just like ah i was doing that thing where i hide behind my hands even though i'm looking through my fingers so it mm-hmm. doesn't even really matter um like making finger cages but it because it was creepy as hell, and then they had cool things like you know the candelabras would be floating above the table. Yeah, um, and it doesn't necessarily make sense, but at the same time, it looks so good and it looks so creepy that you just kind of go with it. Yeah, I yeah the visuals alone, I I just was in love with that. And I think it was really clever the way they used the rover because you got some really nice third person shots and they weren't like a lot of found footage movies. Well, like, I don't know. They'll give you some lame ass excuse as to why you're getting to see something from this angle when it doesn't really make sense. But everything I think we got here made sense. And, um, I was just, I was all about it. Like, yeah. And I uh, like, because I'm a big found footage fan, uh, and this is not exactly a found footage movie because there are definitely moments that move outside of that into more of a you know third person kind of perspective. But it it, is, it uses a lot of that first person like drone footage and that kind mm-hmm. of thing, and uh, that I thought was all really cool. Um, yeah, it's good. Like, like Deep House, uh, I'm, I'm not, I haven't put that top 10 list together yet. I'm not sure if it's going to be on there, but it's in the conversation for sure. So it's, it's definitely like, it is on my short list of, well, this is, I don't know that this is going to be top five and, and there may be something that ultimately pushes it out, but, 
I yeah, it, it but it also may very well be on my top ten. I I, I haven't. You know, we haven't started doing that kind of math yet, Jamie. No, I'm there. I mean, I, I tried to put together a sort of a, a li- I started my list last night, just my my um, my narrow down list. You know, yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. putting everything out there that I thought could possibly make it. And then I'll go back later and, and whittle it down. And I really haven't been blown away a lot this year. So I'm kind of it, it kind of hurts my feelings. <laughs> like usually this time of year. I've got like at least 20 that are vying for attention. And I think I may be topped out at 14 or 15 so far. Yeah. So. yeah. You know, I, I was thinking about that as well until I started looking at the movies that came out this year and like St. Maud came out this year. Oh, does that count? See, you know what? Duncan fucks with me because of uh, the summer series. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't even consider that film because I talked about it for 2019. Yeah. And um, but you're right. Yeah, it did actually get its official release this year uh-huh. here. So, right. so yeah, so that's another one I'll add on my list. Um, Damn it. <laughs> so like Saint Maud was was part of the conversation for me. Um. Uh, if you haven't seen the Ben Wheatley movie in the earth, I can't recommend that enough. That one I have been, that's one of those I keep wanting. And every time I think to watch it, there's a reason that I can't. And then it keeps getting pushed off, but I definitely, definitely want to see that because I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah. I'm not the biggest Ben Wheatley fan. Like I like Ben Wheatley, but I'm not Duncan hear you say that. eh, We've had this conversation, he and I, but uh, but yeah, in the earth is a banger. Like it, it it's this weird blend of uh, like psychosis and 2001, a space odyssey with a little bit of the thing. Holy crap. It's, it's, it's fucking nuts in a really great way, but it's one of those movies like you, you're either going to respond to it or you're not. And because it's so surreal and, and trippy, but I, I really dug it. But like that, and uh, I was a big fan of uh, The Queen of Black Magic. Oh, uh, I've heard good things about that too. Which, yeah, that's, it is very by the numbers, but it, it's got a mean streak to it that I really appreciate. And uh, I thought that new Candyman was fucking great. Oh my God, you just reminded me of something. And uh, I think I talked about it on this show and I fucking forgot what it was, but it's a voodoo movie. It came out this year. Ah, uh, the voodoo got, movie that came out. It's a out voodoo this year. movie. It's a family. They go back to this guy's father dies, and he goes back to the mountain where he was born because his father died, and he takes his whole family with him. And then, like, they get embroiled in all this voodoo stuff. And oh my god, that. it was really good, but I can't remember what the hell the name of it was. All right. Well, okay. if you remember, tell me because I'll I'll give that a watch. Uh, all right, but yeah. all right. Officially, here's the other movie I want to talk about though, because I was yes. just looking at my, like, I you know, just to your point, I was thinking the same thing for a while of like, well, I don't know if there have been a lot of great releases this year, and then when I looked at, it, I was like, oh, there are four or five that are tremendous. Like, you know, the Night House is really good. My heart can't beat unless I tell unless you tell it to is really good. Um, St. Maud is really good. Like there are some really substantial horror movies. Um, so that like that top five is going to be real tough to suss out for me because they're like, there are four or five movies that any one of them could be kind of the best thing I saw this year. Um, anyway, let me, uh, all right, let me mention this, uh, and, and cause we're, we're almost out of time. Um, so believe it or not until this very month, maybe, maybe the end of last month, um, I had never seen any of the black Christmas movies, not even the original new no, had never seen it. Wow. I've seen them okay. all now. I, I've, I've, I've got that <laughs> under my belt. But uh, I, I want to say that 1974 Black Christmas, holy shit, what a great movie. I know. <laughs> uh, you know, and I did like a whole show about it. And that Welcome thing, to what's but... going on. <laughs> right. Hey, you, you know what's a great boat story? Titanic. Have you heard about this? 
<laughs> no, no, I just it, like I knew the, the the reputation of the movie and all that. And it's just one of those movies I'd never gotten around to. It, it, you know, my own fucking fault. No, nobody to blame but myself for that one. Um, and I, I didn't have any reason not to watch it other than I just hadn't. And so one of the great things about doing the Dark Parade is that sometimes I just give myself homework. <laughs> and and so uh, uh, for December, we've done every Black Christmas movie. I think uh, as of this recording... Or when this drops, the first two will be out. The uh, Black Christmas 74 and 2006. And and spoilers, I like both of those movies. Um, 2006 for totally different reasons, but I thought it was fun. And But the 74 Black Christmas, the fact that that exists pre-Halloween blew my fucking mind. Because it is, it has all of the beats. And well, yeah, I mean, well, Carpenter has admitted that he was uh, inspired by that film. I mean, that it, it definitely was in his brain. Yeah. Know? And and that's not and a you, critique you can, or anything. I'm not no, bad no, no, mouthing no. Carpenter for that. No, it's just nothing. like, oh, shit, I didn't realize Bob Clark was like, you know, we did it first. <laughs> we did it better. Not better. But you know what I mean? Like. Bob Clark was just such a pioneer and, and sometimes he just doesn't get the credit he deserves. I think. No, for sure. Anytime anyone, I, my, my blood runs cold. Anytime anyone says Halloween was the first to do POV or Halloween was the first, I mean, which we know that's not true anyway, but it's, it just, I'm like, like, <laughs> like, no, I mean, there were even movies before, like between Black Christmas and Halloween that did some of the stuff that Halloween did. But Black Christmas to me is that is I can't stand the term proto slasher. I don't yeah, yeah, use yeah. it. I, I don't use it. But if you want to, I guess, define a proto slasher, that would that would be. I don't know. That would be a good a good example of it. I guess I don't know. I just hate that term, but it's the atmosphere, the music, um, the just the look of it, the colors. Um, I love the color palette of that film. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, ah, uh, the characters. I mean, Margot Kidder, really? Like she's so bomb in that movie. Like she's just and bombed. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, she's yeah. just uh, and it turns out truly was drunk for yeah. that scene. She is fantastic, yeah. though. Like, I just... Uh, and then you've got something, like, where... I mean, he, he's talking about abortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in a very non-judgmental way. It is very matter-of-fact. And the uh, fact yeah. that, like, Kier Dulia is all beside himself about it. She's like, I'm not going to change my life because you have suddenly decided that you want to be a father and get, play house or whatever. Like, I'm having an abortion because I have plans and I want to keep... I, I would like to keep doing the things that I have planned. And yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's a surprisingly modern film considering it's almost 50 years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. also very scary. Like that, the, all the calls and, and that kind of thing are creepy. And it's something I talked to court about when we, we talked about it for the show but the scene where they're tracing the call and as many times in a movie as you've heard, like, all right, you got to keep them on the line so we can trace the call. Now you know why. Yeah. The fact that you actually see in that movie, like there's this dude scampering around this control room, Mm -hmm. trying to trace down the connection. I love that. It was so good. I like, I watched that movie uh, two or three times in preparation for the show. And every time I watch it, just like my appreciation of it just deepened. Of not only, you know, it being a proto slasher or whatever the fuck you want to call it and, and paving the way for a lot of movies that came after, but just doing a lot of really clever things to like ratchet up the tension. John Saxon is terrific in it. Um, the joke about the fellatio exchange, all that stuff, like all of it worked. It was just like, this movie is so Canadian and so low budget and so successful all at once. And I, yeah, I, like I said, it's one of those things that 
I had just missed. It, it, it was not part of the, uh, my cinematic palette. And I'm so happy that it is. I, I don't know that I'll watch it again this Christmas, but I might. I might. I might yeah. put a fourth viewing. Like, I haven't watched this movie ever, and I may watch it four times this year. You know? I love it. I lo- okay. Think about this the next time you watch it. Uh-huh. All right? The very end, when, uh, when it pans to the outside and you see the cop standing outside, and she's asleep upstairs because everybody just kind of left her there Mm -hmm. and the phone starts ringing. Mm -hmm. Remember that they had said at some point in the movie, I don't remember exactly when it was said, but at some point in the movie, it said that he makes those calls after somebody gets killed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She's totally dead. And I never thought about that until last year. And I watched this movie at least once every year. And I've done that for decades. And I never thought about it until last year. I was watching this movie and we got to the end and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. it, just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And because I always thought it was just creepy that the phone's ringing, you know? I'm like, oh, the cop's outside and the phone's ringing and that's just so creepy, you know? But then it hit me what that means. And or what it could mean. I mean, because, you know, you don't see anything. But I was just like, oh, my. Oh, my God. Yeah. She's fucking dead. Like, and and that's and that's where I choose to go with it, because I really think that that is, to me, the scariest way to look at it. And I kind of feel like that's what he was going for. I could be wrong, but that's how I interpret it. And once I started seeing it that way, I I just it just made it that much scarier. Mm hmm. And yeah. I, oh my God, I do love, I love the shit out of that movie though. I it's do. I truly a great, I mean, it, it, there is a reason that movie is a classic. Uh, I, I ended up getting that shout factory version or scream nice. factory version of, of the movie. And it's got two discs worth of stuff. And, <laughs> and I loved all of it. I was, I could not get enough. I, I thought, yes, that movie was, I'm, I'm so glad I finally watched it. And, it's uh, it's terrific. It's just a, a terrific, terrific horror movie. I was, I mean, w- one of those that kind of grabs you by the collar and it's just like, you know, you dumbass. There is a reason this movie is regarded in the way it is. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's oh, terrific. That, you just made me really happy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what the Christmas season is all about. Um, <laughs> is, you know, w- young women in uh rocking chairs with a bag on their head <laughs> and a doll in their lap um all right i we got time for probably one more maybe two but what what you got well i'll tell you uh i have a christmas movie to round us out one Ooh. that i had not seen until this year it's fairly new and i think it came out in 2019 or something like that did you ever see puka no, no, no. That well, that's one of them Hulu uh Into the Dark, Afraid yeah. of the Dark. Yeah. You know, Into the Dark, you're right. Um Yeah, we were looking for because we were doing our uh House of Salmons, our holidays in the House of Salmons, our Christmas special this year. And so um what we did was we each picked a little talked about uh Christmas movie and that we brought it forward. I brought Mercy Christmas. Um, Mm -hmm. which is like a uh, Christmas uh, horror comedy about cannibalism. It's funny. It's enjoyable. I I recommend it. But the one that really blew me away was Brian's pick, and neither of us had seen it before, and uh, it's Puka. And I guarantee you... (laughs) I like how you're you're pronouncing the title. Puka. Puka. uh, Puka. Um, I guarantee you, you will love this movie. It is... It is pure psychological horror, and it is just basically watching this one character descend into madness, and it is fantastic. The uh, And our lead character, I cannot remember his name, the actor, but he's so good. 
so like you just feel so bad for him you just want to hug him he's one of those characters that you want everything to go well for him but it's not and Mm -hmm. he keeps doing awkward things and you get really uncomfortable when he does awkward things because you want him to be normal and you want people to like you want things to be good for him and he just keeps mucking it up and um it's kind it in a way it kind of reminded me of donnie darko but not um not like it as a one-to-one comparison. There were just certain things about it that made me think of it, but it's, it's basically madness. And but it's so, it's so good. Like it fucks with your head, just like it's fucking with his head. And there are times when you don't know if something you're watching is real or if it's just something that his mind has created and he doesn't always know what's real and what's not. And, you, when it, when the movie starts, you, you kind of feel like it's going to go one direction. Like, oh, this must be like some evil corporation and they know what they're doing. Uh, and you'll, if you watch it, you'll see what I mean. Mm-hmm. And then you realize, uh, n- no, <laughs> it's not, it's not that at all. It's just something totally different, but very dark. And, um, but, you know, under the guise of a children's toy, because it's a guy who he's an actor and he got a job playing the mascot for this children's toy that's coming out at Christmas time. And he so he puts on the puka suit and it has a catchy little song and everything. Puka me, puka you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, and then it just goes dark, <laughs> but it's really, really good. And, um, yeah, it's on Hulu, so if you have a chance, um, I know you're doing a lot of end-of-the-year watching like I am, too, but if you have a chance to squeeze in another Christmas movie, I would recommend it because it's totally worth your time. All right, yeah, I may, I may very well do that. I am, uh, um, as of tomorrow, I am off until January 3rd. So, uh, I've got... Show off? Yeah, i got a handful of shows I'm going to record, but... <laughs> For the most part, I'm doing a little bit of prep for uh, the coming year and whatnot. Uh, but you know, uh, a little bit of relaxing too. Just trying to just trying to have a good time. You know how it is, Jamie. Yeah. To, I'll I'll tell you what. All right, we got a couple of minutes left, so I will I will throw in one final movie. Uh, speaking of having a good time, I watched a movie called Joyride. Oh, the With, Steve Zahn, Paul Walker movie? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although that is a movie called Joyride. This is a documentary from this very year uh, directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. And it is a documentary about his friendship with uh, another comedian named Dana Gould, who, oh. aside from being a stand-up forever, like wrote for The Simpsons for a long time. Yeah, and that kind of I know thing. Dana. And so they went on tour together, and as they went on tour, they were actually in a car accident. Um, Not too terrible, but enough that it banged them up pretty good. And they basically used that as a launching point for them to tell stories about how much they hated one another when they first started out as, as comedians. And it also charts kind of both of their paths through comedy. And then mix in a healthy dose of them just performing on stage. And I think both of them are very funny individuals. They're very funny together. Like, uh, um, there's a great story about Bobcat Goldthwait going with Dana Gould to visit his mother who is suffering from dementia and making a comment that uh, almost got him punched by uh, Dana Gould's father. Um, oh. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's a funny gag, but also like, oh, you know, uh, D- Dana Gould is like, oh, this is the point where my father's going to punch Popcat. Um, and it, but it's, it's very funny. It's very sincere. You know, it's two guys kind of talking about being friends for a number of years and not being friends for a few more and, and how their lives have kind of come together in a way that, uh, they have have become not only friends but kind of best friends uh, through the course of their lives, and uh, yeah, and you know if you like comedy and you like those those guys, you should watch Joyride. And 
uh, it'll make you want to have a best friend like that. And uh, in addition to the holiday spirit, uh, as always, you know, I like I like pointing out uh, happy things that remind me of how important friendship is, just like my friendship with you, Jamie. And um, as we wrap up this uh, this 2020 year, I'm looking for or 2021. Is that what it is? Yeah, it is. holy shit. Yeah. Boy, that I pandemic know. does a number on you, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, as we head into 2022, I'm just really excited to spend yet another year talking about movies with you. And, and, uh, so, you know, this, this show will come out, uh, New Year's Eve, if I am not mistaken. And so I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a a Happy New Year. Ah, well, same from me. And I really hope everyone enjoys their holiday season. It's a little better this year than it was last year. So hopefully you can take advantage of that and, but stay safe while you're doing it. And yeah, Bo, I treasure these moments that we have together and I'm so glad that you asked me to do this with you. Um, and I've enjoyed every second of it and I plan to continue enjoying it on into 2022. Excellent. All right. Well, that's it for us this time. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Christmas, movie house. Merry Christmas, yo. What you watching? <laughs> there, there it is. Jamie's movies. <laughs> 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 <laughs>